the day we're taking a look at these NF, which are happening on Monday, November 7, 2022, and giving you match breakdowns, betting tips and predictions in general on these games. Welcome back to High Stakes, let's get straight into it, also, don't forget to subscribe and push that notification bell to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you, by becoming a member of the High Stakes Patreon, you will have access to our best team picks, total picks, parlay picks and much more. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting predictions that ends up costing you a lot of time and money. Join the High Stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. Charlotte Hornets vs Washington Wizards. Check the status on Dennis Smith Jr., because with him, the Hornets have a very athletic backcourt with scary Terry Rozier, who gives this team some offensive credibility. Without Beal Washington has very little firepower on offense. Even with him, they were just 26th in offensive rating according to dunksandthrees.com. Their starters were terrible on Sunday, and they only covered because of their bench. That bench won't have the same energy after playing the night before. The extra rest and getting Rosier back for his second straight game will allow the Hornets to finally break their losing streak against a team that is in worse shape than they are. Take the Charlotte minus 3 points. The Wizards enter this game 26th in pace through the first three weeks of the season. They have not been an offensive juggernaut by any stretch of the imagination, ranking 24th in offensive rating. The Hornets, on the other hand, like to crank up the pace, ranking 5th through their first 12 games. Washington has the advantage in this game, and the Hornets are banged up on all fronts. Look for them to establish Porzingis in the paint and slow the game down. They are averaging only 108 points per game, good for the bottom five in the NBA. This will be a low-scoring game, especially considering Washington is on the second leg of a back-to-back, -back, and the Hornets will be without a few key guys. Take the under 220.5 points here. Orlando Magic vs Houston Rockets. The Rockets have yet to show the ability to defend at an NBA level through the first three weeks of the regular season. They turned the ball over at a wild rate in their last game against the Timberwolves and have yet to find their footing on both ends. They are averaging a meager 108 points per game as well, a far cry from what they were averaging over the last few seasons. Houston continues to be without Bruno Fernando, left knee soreness, Jason Tate, right ankle soreness, and tidy Washington, left knee sprain all are expected to miss this game. Banchero will get whatever he wants in the paint, and the Rockets will struggle once again to stop anyone. Orlando is 6th in the NBA in rebounding, and they will be able to dominate the paint here. Take the magic to win and cover. Houston played a poor defensive game and a 129-117 loss to the Minnesota Timberwolves Saturday night. Minnesota closed the first half on a 24 run and never looked back, extending Houston's awful start to the season. The Rockets were without rookie Jabari Smith Jr. due to an illness. Houston is 1-9 this season and has trailed by double digits in 9 of its 10 games. They have lost 6 straight. Orlando shot the ball very well, at over 53%, but they could not buy a 3-pointer for much of the afternoon. They were only 4 of 23 from long distance. Terrence Ross returned after missing almost two full games with a bruised left knee, but Cole Anthony missed his fifth game with a right oblique tear. The Magic expect him to be out the rest of the month. Although they are off to a poor start, Paolo Banchero looks to be the future for Orlando. He is averaging 22.9 points, 8.5 rebounds, and 3.5 assists in his rookie season. He is getting to the foul line as well, ranking top 10 in attempts. The only rookie in the last 20 years to rank among the top 10 in free throw attempts was Andrew Wiggins, who attempted 466 for Minnesota in 2014-15 to finish 6th in the NBA. Houston enters this game ranked 8th in pace through the opening stages of the season. They are not scoring much at all, dropping only 108 points per game, while allowing opposing teams to score over 115. Opposing teams are shooting a blistering 48% against Houston, and that trend will continue Monday night. The total number has gone over in four of Orlando's last five games and six of their last nine against the Rockets. Banchero looks great as a member of the Magic, and he will certainly eclipse his season averages here. He is averaging 22.9 points, 8.5 rebounds, and 3.5 assists in his rookie season, and the Rockets have nobody to send in his way. 
take the over 228.5 points with confidence. Detroit Pistons vs. Oklahoma City Thunder The Thunder followed up their four-game winning streak by losing their last two games. They will try to put an end to their losing streak with a win over the Pistons, which will give them their fifth win in their last seven games. Oklahoma City is averaging 110.4 points per game. They scored 94 points in their last game, making 42.9% of their field goals and 34.3% of their three-pointers. Shy Gilgis Alexander led the way for the Thunder with 18 points and three assists. Josh Giddy finished with 15 points and 6 rebounds, while Jeremiah Robinson Earl added 12 points and 3 rebounds. Oklahoma City has struggled defensively, giving up 111.8 points per game. They gave up 108 points in their last game and will need a similar effort if they want to get the win. The Pistons have lost 8 of their last 9 games and 3 of their last 4 home games. They aren't very good offensively, and they played worse in recent games, scoring less than 100 points in two of their last three games. They aren't shooting the ball well from the field and haven't done a good job finding the open man. They won't get a lot of second-chance scoring opportunities because their offensive rebounding hasn't been very good in recent games. They have also been very careless with the ball, which will lead to easy scoring opportunities for the Thunder, who are averaging more than 9 steals per game, so expect them to struggle offensively in this game. The Thunder have played well offensively, averaging more than 110 points per game. Even though they have struggled with their 3-point shot, they are shooting the ball well from the field, making over 46% of their shots. They are very aggressive on the offensive glass and do a good job protecting the ball. They are facing a Detroit team that is giving up more than 118 points per game and won't have trouble scoring in this game. Go with the Thunder to cover the spread. Both of these teams play at an electrifying pace, and in five of the last six Thunder games, they've passed the 223.5 mark significantly, while Detroit have done so in just two of their last five, with neither team possessing an effective defense, so up against each other, there should be plenty of points scored. The under in this head-to-head -head matchup is 11-5 in the last 16 meetings, but seeing that both teams are giving up over 110 points, this should be a very offense-focused matchup with two young teams looking to score the basketball, making this one a very safe bet. Take the over, 223.5 points.